on the Matrix is really interesting because this is exactly what I thought it was going to be when I when I saw this movie. And I the, one of the reasons I, I bumped one of our other stories and brought this one up was because I had a feeling that you would because uh, you saw the movie. Right? No, 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 you didn't. You didn't see the movie. No, mm-hmm. uh, I, I haven't seen any of the Matrixes. I wonder if this is but you had a strong opinion in the slack the other day <laughs> about something calling it like remember. not a movie or something like that yeah, it was I, very snobby yeah. or, you know it was it was very uh, it was very um, snarky not snobby it was mm. very snarky it was probably both to be fair okay I mean, well I, he I said Scrooge was a good movie yeah that's true I stand by these opinions yeah. I, I find the Matrix m- movies unwatchable I've tried to watch the original Matrix probably a dozen times <laughs> mm-hmm. I tried to rewatch it like three months ago I was just like no 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 I, I literally can watch this movie I just have to sit down and do it mm-hmm. couldn't do it can you tell me why I just I. it's just dumb. it's like white noise I mm-hmm. just I just don't get it I don't like it I don't I can read the comments now man you don't get it he's like yes Good. that's what I'm saying I, I don't get it I've tried but I've literally tried to watch this movie a dozen times it's like like my eyeballs just slide off the screen I don't know mm-hmm. what it makes me sleepy it makes me tired it makes me bored I, I don't know what it is I, I don't get it man but it's because you're in the matrix man <laughs> yeah, it's because you're in the that matrix must be it. Still so <laughs> this article is uh, from deadline and it says quote the matrix resurrections would have uh, moved on without Lana Wachowski if she didn't volunteer to direct which is exactly what I assumed happened when I saw this movie. Um, the, article, uh, the article is from Valerie Complex. I wonder if that's her actual last name. Mm. Um, if you've watched The Matrix Resurrections, you might remember a scene where the character Smith, played by Jonathan Groff, takes a, g- a jab at Warner Brothers, possibly leaving Lana and Lily Wachowski, the originators of the Matrix franchise, behind to direct another Matrix film. Well, turns out that's not just hyperbole. That was where this movie lost me. They mentioned Warner Brothers by name in the movie, yeah. mm. which is a level of meta so high that you're not Spider-Man. And you do not have the goodwill built up uh, that Spider-Man does right now. For for all intents and purposes, the original Matrix, to me, is uh, a, an amazing film. I think it's culturally significant in more ways than most of us really would care to admit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I also believe that Matrix 2 and 3 were utterly forgettable and never needed to be made. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So when I found, when somebody said that they're making a fourth one, the first thing I said, and what I think a lot of people said is, Why? Why would you do that? Uh, and then a lot. One of the arguments people make when when they're trying to defend something like this as it's getting made is like, but the original director is back, uh, the original star is back, Keanu's back. Okay, fine. But first of all, it's not both directors. It's just one. It's just Lana. Uh, it's not Lily. Uh, and when I saw the way this movie came out, it, it felt like it was a director or a, it felt like a writer that was scrambling to find a story to tell because she had to, not because she wanted to, mm-hmm. which is directly in contradiction to what a lot of the press or, you know, the press junket talked about. She, uh, the Wachowskis lost their parents recently and she told this story, Lana did, about how she went back to writing this movie because she wanted to be around familiar characters because it helped her cope with her parents' death. Mm-hmm. Cynical me says that sounds like press fodder. Uh, obviously losing your parents is, is freaking awful and if that's what helps somebody cope then that's what helps somebody cope but to me this movie felt like something that the studio's like look we're gonna make this th- there's money to be made here the this is a this movie has strong brand recognition Keanu is willing to come back uh, we're gonna make this with or without you better it be with you than have you not be involved Oof. Mm. Uh, because that's what happens when you write it when you make a movie for a big studio you don't own that uh, those characters, the studio owns those characters, right? Mm-hmm. Not everybody gets to be J.K. Rowling. Mm-hmm. Um, so it says, in a recent interview with, Co- with Collider, uh, Resurrections producer James McTeague admits that WB had plans to assign a different director. M- McTeague had worked on all of the Matrix films and stated that, quote, the money-making capability of a fourth Matrix film meant that there was always talk. Uh, however, when Lana Wachowski jumped at the chance to direct, the studio quickly said yes. It just made sense to have the original director on board. See, I don't know if she jumped at the chance to direct as she jumped as the chance to have somebody else not direct. Yeah, that's exactly um, what I would think. The, yeah. I, I, and more power to her, right? I mean, this is mm-hmm. clearly, they created something that's extremely culturally significant. Even to this day, 18 years later, those characters likely do mean a great deal to them because it's uh, it speaks to their career and what they've accomplished. You're not going to so easily want to just push that aside mm-hmm. and let somebody else mess around with your with your characters. This uh, A good example of this is like, imagine all the comic book uh, writers who created 
hundreds of characters who have never had any say over what happens to them yeah. uh, as they get um, shuffled and reimagined in every shape, way, and form. The I'm I was telling Miracle the other day. I'm ex- I'm looking forward to maybe to the show Peacemaker maybe more than anything because the Suicide Squad the, the new one is a masterpiece as far mm. as I'm concerned. It's a James mm. Gunn masterpiece. Mm. Um, and uh, but the one thing that I'm that I'm worried about is that they're doing the character Vigilante and the character Vigilante. Sh- if there's one character that shouldn't be goofy, Vigilante should not be a goofy character. But the television version of it uh, in this context looks absolutely ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Uh, so imagine being the character, the the, the writer. I, I don't know uh, off the top of my head who it was that created that character, but imagine being the comic book artist or or author that come that just you know that created so many of these characters and then watching them get done dirty by all of these movie studios that want to, uh, whether it's force feed some type of agenda into the character or just change it for the sake of uh, the studio needs more of this, so we're mm-hmm. going to put this person there. Like, there's a thousand reasons why these characters get bastardized and then they have to just sit by and take it because they don't own any of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She doesn't own the Matrix. Nope. Warner Brothers does. So she has to now find a way to stay involved just so that even if it's bad, at least it's bad because she made it, not because somebody else took it and had no clue what to do with it. Mm-hmm. That's true. I, I, I mean, she also just wants to be a part of the legacy. Yes. Right? I mean, she doesn't want to let the, the fourth Matrix movie just fall into somebody else's hands. So, okay, so you the first one, in your view, is a masterpiece. The second two were forgettable. I only saw the second two once each, and they my brain just shuts off during them. Uh, to me, they yeah. became, uh, they became uh, highbrow, wannabe intellectualism that didn't really work for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I do remember going to the theater despite the fact that I couldn't get through the first Matrix to see the Matrix 2. I, I was in high school when that when the, the second Matrix came yeah. out. We left. Like, yeah. We, we yeah. just left like a halfway through. Yeah. Maybe 30 minutes in. It, but, but what did you think about the fourth one? It's maybe one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire really? life. Really? Not in my entire life. That's... that's I have a, I have a, a proclivity for... I, I can be hyperbolic. Okay, sure. there are bright spots in this movie that had nothing to do with the original trilogy. Uh, mm. The character of Bugs, by played by Jessica Henwick, I thought had potential. Like, mm. I would have rather seen a movie just about her and not make it a Matrix movie. Mm. Take the same character, uh, use a similar story, and don't call it a Matrix movie, and I think she could have carried it to a decent performance. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. The guy who played... Uh, the reimag not reimag the, they couldn't get Hugo Weaving back uh, be- for s- because of scheduling issues to play Smith. This guy chews the scenery fairly well, but he's not Hugo Weaving. He's never mm. going to have Hugo Weaving's voice. He's not going to have Hugo Weaving's stage presence. And I think Neil Patrick Harris did an okay job at his version of what do they call him? The analyst rather yeah, than yeah. The it's like th- there's a character in the original called the architect. This is the analyst, mm. and Neil Patrick Harris plays a decent bad guy. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. but these elements were not, you know, uh, Keanu Reeves doesn't look like he's like, he looks like he wants to be there because Keanu Reeves is the nicest guy ever. And they're probably like, we want you to make this movie. And he's probably just wow. too nice to say no. Sure. Uh, and Carrie Ann Moss looked like she would rather be anywhere, but making this movie. That's wow. my personal opinion. While, oh, while they were doing man. this, there was, I saw nothing in her performance that felt like she actually wanted, wanted to be there and giving this performance similar to like when she played, um, when she was in daredevil as, uh, Oh, what's the lawyer? I can't remember the lawyer's name off the top of my head. But she's uh, uh, in Daredevil. I want to say Happy Hogan, but that's <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I know that's um, something different. Um, but uh, she, she's, uh, she's, she looks like she wants to be there, right? Whereas then you get um, uh, who is it from Silence of the Lambs? Um, what's her name? Oh, Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster. Uh, in uh, j- she's in. Uh, in the Daredevil, in the uh, the Defender series, and she looks like she would rather be anywhere mm. but doing this. Like she's just doing it for a paycheck, right? Mm. Um, but uh, Carrie Ann Moss in that show as the lawyer uh, looks like she wants to be there and is enjoying doing this role. Whereas in this movie, she just looks bored. Oh yeah. like, man, she looks like she knows that it's bad. That now that could just be my personal bias of how much I was disliking this movie, mm. and she's not on screen very much. That's the other thing; she's not in this movie very much, and the whole time she's on screen, she doesn't look like she wants to be there. Yikes. That could be me projecting my own take on the movie onto her performance. I can I can readily admit that I could be seeing it that way, but that's what it looked like to me. Yeah. Mm. Uh, did you find out who? What? Um, which one are you talking about, Marcy or Samantha? Carrie Ann Moss's character. Carrie Ann Moss. Yeah. Oh Jesus! I should. Just done that. Uh, well, one of them says Marcy. It's not Marcy. <laughs> um, 
but it's not important. Uh, I, I just get annoyed when I can't remember things off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it, the bright spots had nothing to do with the original with the original trilogy. Wow. Um, That's so, really disappointing. But I mean, you've, been, you've now been disappointed three times. Yeah. So yeah. are you used to but, it? Well, I, I wouldn't even call myself disappointed in the original two sequels because I was too young to really care enough. I'm like, oh, this is kind of sucky. I was barely mm. born. Whatever. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I, I didn't, I didn't really find it good in any way, shape or form. And, a lot, wow. and that's the other thing. People are like, it's, it's woke. I'm like, no, it's just a bad movie. Hmm. It's just a really bad movie that didn't need to be made. Like the whole time you're watching it, you feel like the it's super meta and over the top. And we've gone over this before, so we don't yep. need to go over this again and again. It's super meta and over the top, but in a way that doesn't really work. So for sure, sure. seriously, you can't IMDb Carrie Ann Moss. <laughs> Sorry, because, I'm annoyed now because I googled it. My bad. Sorry for not googling it. This is your fault, Miracle. It is. I'm passing the blame off to you. Okay. Well. Sorry. You know what? We're just going to do it on air. I'm just going to do it myself because you know what? Sometimes when you have to do things, you have to do it yourself. You have to do it yourself. Yep. Also. I should have, but my laptop died. Yep. Oh, (laughs) dang. (laughs) So. (laughs) Uh, Jerry Hogarth. Jesus Christ. Happy Hogan, Jerry Hogarth. Ah, I see what Uh, you did. Okay. uh, That took me all of eight seconds miracle i'm sorry i googled uh, it <clears throat> have you heard of imdb did you grow up with it like we did <laughs> internet <laughs> movie i'm just gonna skate dad da base i'm just i'm we're sorry i we got a comment once that said i mean to miracle miracle i'm sorry okay it's because you keep apologizing when you yeah. keep apologizing you get people treating you mean why are you twisting you son of a bitch <laughs> for the people listening to the Wait, podcast it's family friendly i thought i would have been swearing this whole time <laughs> it's fine we try to be family family friendly it's um, okay you're just gonna hear like chicken beeps everywhere <laughs> That's a great uh, way to deal with i that. can't believe mm-hmm. i had looked it up on my own miracle i'm sorry <laughs> we're, we're kidding we're kidding you know what's a good tv show that makes you happy cobra kai no nope, we're still talking ah, about dang I, it <laughs> That was a, that was a fantastic attempt, though. Um, I tried. The, yep, you're you're just all sorts of off today. You know what? You I can, am sorry. You can go home. I can. Yeah, ejected. Go home. Ejected. You are gone. It says okay. So I just I, we we kind of got off topic here, but basically they talk about the money making <laughs> capability. It says quote, and this is from that uh, that producer. It says, look, I think when you've had a franchise that has much money making potential and capability, there's always talk. It's the same way that Marvel Universe repeats and turns in on, and turns in on itself. Or you have Spider Man, or you have Iron Man, or Thor. They said said McTeague. There's always potential to update those movies just because of the possibility of making the money and telling new stories. Uh, I shouldn't say it's just purely fiscal thought but yeah look there were new there were ver- there was versions out there so they're talking about like there's other scripts they should have just done that they should have just expanded it have keanu do a cameo of some sort and tell a new story don't retell it in this weird way that doesn't work i thought they were going to retell it with bugs that would have been a cool storyline if they did it with that character but if we're being honest and if i'm most of us, meaning people who are like not necessarily in line with mainstream uh, cinema reviewers, would have been like, oh, look at this. They're taking the traditionally male character and they're giving it to a... F-. We would have complained. So, you know, th- at the very least, they kept Keanu, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they did make it a weird power of love story that didn't need to be done again. Mm-hmm. But like, I can already see like where we would have complained at that. So I can at least give them credit that they kept him as like the main focus of the movie, right? I, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna mm-hmm. i'm not gonna say like that either possibility would have worked better mm-hmm. but yeah hmm. so I, I just it wasn't the movie for me it is what it it is what it is but yeah it says uh this movie and then like some of the comments are funny so it's like this movie shows the matrix story is finished no one speaks well of the movie it was a dud with or without lana and the wb can't even defend it with a with a competent pr effort if wow. they can't even put the money into the pr effort then it's uh i think they knew it was dead on arrival um, but it it did get a subsequent release with uh, HBO Max in theaters, right? That, that likely, if I mean, it, it did horrible at the theaters. But a big Oof. part of that is because of it got the day and date release with HBO Max. Like me, we went and saw Kingsman in theaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, if Kingsman had been released on streaming, we would have absolutely have watched it. Streaming, we would have, even though we liked it a hell of a lot more than we liked The Matrix. Mm-hmm. But since I was already not 
super motivated to want to go see, I mean I was going to go see it either way yeah. but I had a bad feeling from the from the off right mm. it never mm. felt like a Matrix movie to me even in the trailers mm -hmm. so the, if I had to choose between going out to see it and seeing it at home I was going to choose to see it at home and I don't think this movie would have benefited from uh, from the, seeing it in the theater either because I don't think the action scenes were competently done in a way that would have made the large scale viewing experience something to change your opinion but that's the thing with McTeague he was saying it's basically a cash grab right yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so what's the cash grab angle here I mean did did, H, did Warner Brothers a miscalculated so cash they, grab they miscalculated that much uh, like that's huge. The, I mean, the, I I don't know if that's necessarily like. I mean, they're going to get it wrong from time to time. And WB mm. Warner Brothers has that ability to to get it right sometimes and screw it up. Remember, this is the same studio that's doing the Batman movie that we were just fawning over the 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 release for, right? So well, they also did Space Jam too. Again, hits and misses. Wow. Hits, hits and misses are all over the place. And I think uh, in one of OMB Reviews uh, segments recently, he said that mm -hmm. out of all the studios, the one that did the worst this year was was Warner Brothers. Mm. Uh, yeah. Worse than Disney and worse than Sony. I, Sony had like the best year ever this year because they only released movies that people actually wanted to see, mm. um, the and didn't release streaming versions of it. Whereas mm -hmm. Marvel had, you know, Marvel's pushing Disney Plus. And Warner Brothers is pushing HBO Max. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of, uh, you have to, uh, I've been trying to find a way to like competently like look at numbers for streaming services, but they're not public records. Right. So you can't really do that. Right. There's Samba TV. That was the thing I was trying to think of the other day, which can get you like decent information on it. Now it's, that explains your search history. It's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> digital version of like, uh, what, what was it called? Like the, the box, the Nielsen mm -hmm. box. It's like a digital version of that. Interesting. Um, so I, I don't know if you'll ever get accurate numbers. Maybe just having it on the streaming service is enough to justify it, but it had like 150 or $200 million budget. That's a lot of money, man. Yeah. That's, that's a huge miscalculation. I mean, even even with the Matrix property. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so, oh, and uh, in addition to those uh, other movie uh, streaming service hybrids, you got uh, Universal pushing mm -hmm. Peacock. Because you yeah. go on to Peacock is, is and you Peacock see the Universal. Universal. Yeah, Comcast. Okay. NBC. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's all under the Comcast umbrella. Nobody so, like, would pick Universal. Peacock as a name unless it was related <laughs> to NBC. <laughs> right, exactly. Nobody. Yeah. Um, so that's why you can go on to Peacock and watch like the latest uh, Halloween Paramount uh, Plus. Yeah. Paramount, Paramount Plus, Plus is a thing. There's another one. We're just yeah. we're just back at the the cable days, just mm -hmm. with more with more logins. Yeah, but you got a full commitment from a studio like Warner Brothers with HBO. Yeah, and then you got these other studios that are just kind of like trying to uh, dip a toe in both worlds. But like Spider Man, that was Sony, right? Uh, yeah. So the funding wise, seventy five percent Sony, twenty five percent Disney. So because ah, Sony owns the rights right. to S the Spider Man, but they leased basically leased out to Marvel to use in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But they were all in on the cinema yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah, no, no day and date release for any of that. Mm. And they learned their lesson with um, they they released uh, Shang Chi and Eternals theater only as well. But uh, mm. Mar but Black Widow got uh, Disney Plus and. Oh. Studio, which is why the why they think that the movie why Sh Scarlett Johansson sued right, them right, right. because her bonus in that movie was tied to ticket Ooh. sales mm -hmm. and she won or they said a lot of court so uh -huh. she clearly had a, a good argument there because yeah. Disney can just drown you in lawyers if they need to even whatever I don't know what her net worth is but it ain't Disney's net worth yeah so yeah. You, you can't go up against uh, a corporation like that and expect to win mm -hmm. even with uh, the with pockets as deep as hers mm -hmm. so plus the you want to preserve like the ability that you'll be able to work together later and they're, they're doing that now they're they're launching like a Black Widow podcast uh, type thing and I think she's going to do work for them on the back end like uh, really? behind the scenes stuff she's gonna, she'll likely produce for, for Marvel mm -hmm. so yeah that was uh, so to me that that article just kind of confirmed what I already knew that this was the, that they, was, they, they were going to make this with or without her and she's just like better I at least try uh, you know I can applaud the effort like I don't think it came out well but better to at least try and stay involved in something you're pat in something you clearly care about than just be like eh, let the studio do what they want with it mm -hmm. that's an artist's perspective on it I think absolutely her take on it so yeah makes yeah. sense to me yeah. mm -hmm. was there anything you liked about the me I'm curious was there anything you liked about the matrix mm -hmm. nothing not even bugs bugs was cool but I just don't care for the matrix mm -hmm. you're too young 
I, I, yeah, because it came out the same year I was born. You're still in the Matrix. Yeah, I know. That's what it is. Well, we're, only, we're there together. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like I like the idea of simulation theory. I love that. But it's always going to be dumbed down by the time it gets through a Hollywood script <gasps> writing process, you know? Like, mm. it's it's not like you're going to get some deep... Su Even the original Matrix is, like, deep and insightful, but not overly complicated. Well, mm. if people don't understand what the simulation theory is, look at Sims or Minecraft. They, it's kind of the explanation what the matrix is hmm. or like what simulation theory is because you're a god of a world that you created and yeah uh, I, I read something recently that said simulation theory is uh it's um religion for atheists mm. yeah um, i like that yeah. but has come there, on has there, there, has there been a, a a movie or a tv series that you feel like has done that theory justice black mirror Black oh, Mirror sure. has done it. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Black yeah. Mirror has done it, and I'm kind of sad that they're not making new episodes. I think they kind of ruined it, casting Miley Cyrus for that one season. Mm. I didn't like her episode because basically what happened was... Was she in there for more than one episode? No, it was just one episode, oh. but... You they can't ruin a whole show with one bad episode. No, but Miley like, Cyrus, you can. She ruins everything. Yeah, she ruins everything because how Netflix advertised that season it was just Miley Cyrus's face and I was like I'm done <laughs> she's got name recognition unfortunately they're looking at it from a business perspective not an artistic perspective but her episode mm. was the one that I really hated because basically what happened was they made a robot that was supposed to be like her character who's a singer which is on the nose mm -hmm. <laughs> because she's a real singer in real life it's so stupid I guess but yeah so this girl she has troubles like having friends and then she her mom buys her this robot because she's like, I know you love the singer, so here's a robot. And then her robot has like a weird glitch where it kind of has its own mind. And it's like, no, my body should be over there. I need to go back to that body. And hmm. you find out that secretly the company who made these robots like took a little bit of Miley Cyrus's character's mind and downloaded it into the robot's brains, but hmm. made it dumber so kids can play with it. Hmm. It was a stupid episode. I hated that episode so much. Black, like Black Mirror was a TV show that I could get into because it's, it's, it's probably the best thing mm -hmm. that's come out of Britain in the past 120 years. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.